Hello students, in this lecture, I'll uh, detail you about the uh, dipole and effect of dipole on its surroundings. Okay, so what do we actually mean by a dipole? Dipole is nothing but a combination of equal and opposite charges which are placed at some separation. Okay, so these are just charges. Why are we studying them separately? We have already studied charges. Okay. So this combination. Equal and opposite charges. At a small separation. Is found. In. Millions of molecules. In fact I can say in almost every molecule. Okay. And why it appears I will talk about it. Let's take the example of HCl. Okay. HCl. Cl has a tendency to pull some electron on its side due to which it becomes delta negative and H becomes delta positive and there is some bond length between H and Cl. So obviously a dipole is created. Similarly the most famous example is H2. Okay. Oxygen, Hydrogen. Again, oxygen acquires some delta negative into 2 because it pulls from both and both are getting some delta positive. So, it is a combination of two dipoles. Okay. So, these molecules which already has charge separation is called polar molecules. They have a permanent dipoles. Okay. But there are certain molecules which don't have any delta positive or delta negative separated but when field is applied on it uh, the polarity arises okay so let's take this example this is a non-polar molecules what does it mean means center of negative charge and center of positive charge coincides but when it is placed in some external electric field external electric field pulls the positive charge in this direction or pushes it okay force on positive charge and obviously if there is a negative cloud here it experiences force in this direction due to which these two centers get separated and we get a dipole moment or dipole is formed okay as soon as the field become absent it return back to the initial position okay so these are called non polar dipole or non polar molecules but the process of inducing dipole with the help of external electric field is called induced dipole moment or induced dipole okay and the process occurs in almost every mo non-polar molecule okay almost every non-polar molecule yes the extent of separation varies with different type of molecules but it occurs in almost every molecule a dipole is characterized by a term known as dipole moment okay it's a vector quantity its direction is from negative charge to positive charge and it is defined as the charge any of the charge because both are equal into the separation between them okay Again, this is just the separation and charge, product of separation and charge. So, obviously, its unit will be charge is coulomb, separation in meter. Coulomb meter is the standard unit of dipole moment. Again, it's a vector quantity. Its direction is from negative to positive charge. Okay, let's say uh, this is a positive charge. This is a negative charge. Their values are 5 nanocoulombs and there is a separation of let's say 10 to the power minus 4 
meter. So what is the dipole moment and its direction? So P will be charge is 5 into 10 is to power minus 9 into separation is 10 is to power minus 4. So we are getting 5 into 10 is to power minus 13 coulomb meter and the direction will be from negative to positive. So it will be J cap. Okay. It will be J cap. Okay, so this is how we'll calculate the dipole moment of any dipole system. As dipole is a vector quantity, if there are more than two or two dipoles present in the system, the net dipole moment is nothing but the resultant vector resultant of the individual dipoles. Okay, so let's take the example of H2O. There will be two dipoles, one is this and another is this their directions will be and they will be equal in magnitude so these two vectors can be called as p naught p naught let's say angle this angle is theta and this is also theta so what will be p net p net will be 2 times p naught cos theta and its direction will be along the bisector as their magnitudes are equal Okay, let's take few more examples on that. This is a positive plus Q charge. We have a charge minus 2Q here and another charge plus Q. Okay, so the separation is L. This is also L. We have to find the net dipole moment. So what we'll do, we'll form two separate dipoles. This is plus Q, this will be minus Q. One dipole plus another dipole minus Q plus Q. This is another dipole. So their dipole moments will be QL. This angle is given, let's say 90 degree, and this is also QL. So the net 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 dipole moment is root to QL, which is along the bisector. Make an angle 45 with each of the vectors. Okay. Let's take one more example in which Charges are placed at the corner of an equilateral triangle. This is plus Q, this is plus Q, and this is minus Q. Okay, so we have to find the net dipole moment as well as its direction. So again, we'll form two dipoles. One will be minus Q and plus Q. And another will be, again, this minus 2q will be broken into minus q and minus q and the next dipole will be along horizontal direction. So these are the two dipoles and they are making an angle 60 degree. So just by indicating them with their dipole moment, two vectors are making an angle 60. Two equal magnitude vectors are making an angle 60 with each other so the resultant is nothing but along the bisector p net as their values are equal and this angle will be 30 degree the expression for p net can be written as 2 times p cos of 30 so that will be root 3 p or root 3 q l Okay, now let's talk about parameters in a dipole system. Okay, so the line joining the charges, line joining the charges, this line I'm talking about, this line is called axis of the dipole and perpendicular bisector of the segment of joining of charges is called equatorial line okay this is called axis or axial line 
this is called equatorial line this is the perpendicular bisector okay and in this diagram i have indicated the separation as 2l it can be taken as anything a d or 2l sometimes we will take it to be 2l to make some distance easy to write okay for example if i have to write this distance from the charge let's say this is distance r from the center yeah one more thing the midpoint is called center of the dipole all the distances will be measured from the center so this distance will be r minus l and this distance will become r plus l okay that is the only reason we take it to be 2l otherwise l by 2 or a by 2 will appear which is not a good term fractions we are avoiding fractions okay so equatorial line axis center these terms okay yeah you can mm, note one important thing for equatorial line that all the points on the equatorial line are at equidistance from positive and negative charges okay this distance r and this distance r are equal okay let us take one more example of calculation of dipole moment okay so there are charges this is minus 2q this is minus 5q and this is plus 3q the easiest way to recognize the dipole system is to find is to observe that net charge on the system is zero as in this system okay so we'll form again two dipoles this minus 5q will be broken into two parts to form a dipole with minus 2q it should be minus 2q to form a dipole with plus uh, there is some mistake this should be plus okay to form a dipole with plus 3q it should be minus 3q okay so this is how this dipole will be formed and this dipole will be formed so their dipole moments will be q into 2q into separation which is 2l in this case and the other dipole will be charge is 3q but the separation is l so we have two vectors inclined at an angle of 90 degree their magnitudes are 3ql and 4ql so the resultant will obviously be 5ql and it will make an angle of theta let's say 10 theta will be 3 ql by 4 ql so 3 by 4 so theta is nothing but 37 degree okay these are the simple calculations of joining of two vectors you must know these calculations now we are deriving an expression for electric field at the axis and at the equatorial line of a dipole let's talk about the axis first okay let's say this is some point where electric field due to this combination is to be observed let the distance from the center of the point is o we can call it uh, point uh, anything a okay so this distance will be r minus l again this distance will be r plus l so at a there is nothing new there are just two fields e due to positive away from the charge e due to negative towards the charge ok these two fields are opposite in direction and obviously e due to positive is more because it is nearer so net field can be written as E net. I'm just uh, first of all we can write in vector form. So it is the resultant of these two fields, but as they are in opposite direction, when we take their magnitudes, they will give us the difference. K Q over square of R minus L minus K Q 
square of r plus l okay so what will be the expression we can take out kq common taking their lcm we'll get r plus l whole square minus r minus l whole square over r square minus l square whole square so this expression is this will give us 4 rl 4 k q r l over r square minus l square whole square this should be viewed as 2 times k q into 2l why i let you know r square minus l square whole square so what is this this is 2kp over r square minus l square whole square okay so this is an important expression this is an important expression which gives us the field along the dipole but as we deal with very short dipoles in day to day life we try to find out the dipole or dipole effect of dipole due to molecules in its surroundings so the separation is very small as compared to r if if l is very very small l is very very small as compared to the distance of dipole where observations are taken so r is very very large as compared to l or l is very very large as compared to small as compared to r are same things we can take r square minus l square as simply r square okay so the expression this expression is absolute this expression will become 2kp uh, r is left here sorry 2kp this will come as r to the power 4 r will also be there so we'll get r cube and this is the expression we'll use 99 percent times because we will deal with short dipoles okay so this is the important expression you need to remember this derivation is quite important it comes in board exams also okay so what about its direction as we can say positive charge field is more so the direction of e net is in this direction which can be observed as the direction of dipole moment so what about this direction let's take a point at this point e due to negative it will be more e due to positive it will be small because it is farther away from the charge and the resultant field will be in this direction again which is along the direction of dipole moment so it won't be wrong if i place a vector so we can say e axis in vector form is 2kp again in vector form by r cube okay remember this expression now we'll talk about field at the equatorial line okay so we have already talked about equatorial line now we'll talk about field due to equatorial line okay let's say this is a point on the equatorial line there will be two electric field one due to positive charge another due to negative charge e due to positive charge will be away from this and e due to negative charge will be towards the charge this is e due to negative charge okay and both the fields will be equal in magnitude let's say e not e not okay so the resultant will be in this direction and if this angle is theta this will also be theta this will also be theta this will also be theta 
okay this distance is r so e net is nothing but 2 e naught cos theta okay so the resultant field is on the equatorial line is opposite to the dipole moment and its value is 2 e naught cos theta the expression is not final yet because we need to find out e naught and cos theta okay let's talk about e naught so what is the distance between the point and the charge i'm talking about this distance hypotenuse so it is nothing but r square plus l square root of that okay so the value of e naught is k q by square of the distance so it gets r square plus l square and what is cos theta here what is cos theta the expression for cos theta from this triangle this right angle triangle is base which is l divided by the hypotenuse so l by r square plus l square whole to the power half okay so we get to the expression of e net as 2 times k q over r square plus l square to the power 1 into cos theta which is l r square plus l square to the power half and this should be written as k q into 2l which is the dipole moment this bracket r square plus l square to the power 3 by 2 okay again this expression is absolute and uh, there is no assumption but if r is taken to be very very large as compared to l or l is very very small we reduce this expression to this term r square plus l square can be taken as r square so this will become r cube and the expression will appear as kp by r cube let's talk about direction e equatorial we got the expression of magnitude but what about direction as we have indicated here that these two are opposite dipole moment and net electric field so when we write the expression in vector form we'll add an extra negative here this is the final expression you should remember it okay very important on axis there was two and field were parallel to dipole moment and on equatorial line the expression is missing that two vector and there is a negative sign because of the opposite direction of field and dipole moment. Now we will derive an expression for potential on the axis. The expression will be quite easy. Again, this distance is r. This is r minus l. These derivations do appear in board exam. So pay some attention and potential has no direction so v net is nothing but the sum of these two potentials v due to positive charge plus v due to negative charge so what is v due to positive charge k positive charge by r minus l plus k minus q r plus l so the expression becomes kq this comes out as 2L over R square minus L square. Q into 2L is nothing but dipole. So KP over R square minus L square. Again with the same assumption if L is very very small as compared to L or R. So we have KP by R square is the 
potential on excess okay one important thing to be noted that this expression is missing something that is the sign okay and that is because at this point we are on the nearer side of positive charge v net will be positive and if we are somewhere on this side of the axis the v net will be negative why because the negative charge potential will dominate on this side and positive charge potential is dominating on this side so we can add plus and minus here okay or i'll give you another expression in general form also okay so when we are on the positive side nearer to the positive side we'll take plus kp by r square we are nearer to the negative side we'll take minus kp by r square on the axis okay this is the easiest one we have to find uh, potential on the equatorial line so these two distances will be equal let's say this is r this distance can be called as anything let's say l dash this will also be l dash potential has no direction so v due to positive plus v due to negative both charges are also equal and opposite distances are equal so we can say v net which is v due to positive plus v due to negative charge is k q over l dash plus k minus q over l dash and that is zero so v on equatorial line is zero irrespective of the location of the point here 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 at all the points these distances are equal so the potential is zero at this point zero at this point zero at this point two okay so this is an equipotential line we can call this also okay till now we have studied the electric field and potential due to a dipole on specific places and that are on the axis and on the equatorial line but what if a point is at a general location let's say point a for this dipole this is not on its axis and neither on its equatorial line so in this situation we have to find e and v at a, any general point okay so what we do we take the component of this dipole as dipole is a vector quantity its component can be taken p cos theta in the line joining the dipole and the point we call it p parallel and this is p sin theta you can call it p perpendicular okay so for these two dipoles which is p cos theta and p sin theta now point a for p cos theta point a is on axis for p cos theta a is on axis and for p sin theta it is on equatorial line okay thus we have reduced this problem of general point again to the previously solved situations okay so what about field at a field at a so again i am drawing this so there will be two fields one due to e parallel that is along the axis this is e due to p parallel and as point a is lying on the equatorial line of this p perpendicular so the field will be opposite to so that is the e due to p perpendicular and the net field will be the resultant of these two e net okay let's say this angle is called alpha so first of all we'll talk about what is e parallel 
due to p parallel is nothing but 2 k p parallel this is the expression by r q what is the value of p parallel is 2 p cos theta so 2 k p cos theta by r q what is e due to p perpendicular that is k p perpendicular by r q so that will be k p sin theta by r cube ok so what is the net field e net as these two fields are mutually perpendicular you can see that these two fields are mutually perpendicular e net is nothing but e due to p parallel square plus e due to p perpendicular square and whole root so when we take these two values k p by r cube will come out and will have square of 2 cos 2 cos theta and sin square theta so 2 cos square theta will be uh, 4 cos square theta and 1 sin square theta 4 cos square theta plus sin square theta 1 cos square theta and 1 sin square theta will give you 1 and 3 cos square theta will be left okay so the final expression can be written as kp by r cube 1 plus 3 cos square theta square root of this there also square root will be okay so this is e net at any point at any general point on the dipole at a distance r for which this position vector makes an angle theta with the dipole moment okay this is dipole this is the point this is the radius vector and this is the direction of dipole moment and the angle between these two vectors is theta okay so this is e net what about the direction of net field okay again i need to draw that diagram that at point A, the field will have two components E due to P parallel and E due to P perpendicular, and the resultant field will be this E net making an angle alpha, let's say with the radius vector. Okay, this is the dipole. So for 10 alpha, from the diagram itself you can say 10 alpha is nothing but perpendicular upon base. So E due to P perpendicular by E due to P parallel. E parallel and E perpendicular are in front of you. So take their ratios. KP R cube, KP R cube will get cancelled and will be left with sin theta by 2 cos theta which is half of 10 theta okay so this is an important expression 10 alpha is equal to half 10 theta okay so we find out the magnitude of field the direction of field now i'll talk about potential okay it is an easy term Again, the same diagram, dipole moment P, any general point R, component of P, P cos theta, P sin theta, point A is on the axis of P cos theta and on the equatorial of P sin theta. So, potential at A is potential due to P cos theta and will say the expression of axis will be applicable here and v due to p sin theta and expression of equatorial line will be applicable here okay so this is k p cos theta by r square and this is simply zero okay so 
what is potential at A? We can say this expression as K P dot R by R cube. Okay. Why this is the better expression in comparison to other? Because it gives the polarity. If let's say these are two locations, one is A, another is B. Okay. Both are making same angle. Let's say this is 30 degree and this is also 30 degree. So what will be the potential at A and B? Are they same? They are same in value but different in sign. For R A and P, the angle is actually 30 degree. So V A will be positive. Okay. For B, the angle between P and R B, this is R B, is actually this which is how much 150 degree so when we take care of that vb will automatically comes out to be negative and it should be because it is nearer to the negative charge negative charge will be here of the apple positive charge will be here for the dark okay so v is nearer to the negative charge so vb should be negative v is nearer to the positive charge it should be positive and it is taking the uh, consideration of the location of point okay so this expression is better one okay uh, and this is also quite decent just take care of theta okay theta is the angle between p vector and r vector okay if it is obtuse then potential will be negative okay in this part of the video i'll talk about uh, how a dipole behaves when it is placed in external electric field again the topic is name is very important how a dipole behaves when it is placed in external electric field earlier we talked about electric field of a dipole now we are placing a dipole in some others electric field and we are now observing the effects on it okay the first effect we'll talk about is force on a dipole when it is placed in external and we'll deal with for the time being uniform electric field only okay so let's say this is a dipole and when it is placed in this is uniform electric field so positive charge will experience force QE in the direction of field and negative charge will also experience a force QE but opposite to the field. So as field is uniform, so these two electric fields or these two forces, we can say, will be uh, equal in magnitudes. Okay, but the direction of forces will be opposite. So F net on the dipole is zero irrespective of the orientation whether the dipole is like this let's say this is p this is positive charge this is negative charge this will experience qe in the direction of field this will experience qe in opposite to field the net force is zero provided e is uniform okay so the final statement is force will be zero if field is uniform irrespective of the orientation of the dipole okay but yes if field is non-uniform non-uniform then the force will appear okay we'll deal with this case in the last part of this video the second effect is the torque we'll talk about torque on an electric dipole when placed in external uniform electric field okay as we talked about that the force will be zero but these two forces are acting with some separation they are equal and opposite but there is some separation okay we can call it the separation or we sometimes call it r perpendicular also this situation is called couple situation is called couple equal and opposite forces at some separation okay so couple cause f net to be zero but torque may appear okay 
vector may be zero or may not be zero. <coughs> so in this case, torque. How we write torque due to a couple is the magnitude of any one force because both are equal into the perpendicular separation between them. In this case, this is d. So perpendicular separation is nothing but d sine theta. Okay. So what we are getting is Q e is the force into d sine theta. We can write this as e Q e sorry Q d into sine theta. This is appearing as P e sine theta. Okay, we could have said it P cross e or e cross P. But now let's talk about what should we call it e cross p or p cross e as torque is also a vector quantity or something else. So let's talk about the direction of torque. These two forces are trying to align dipole in this direction. Field is in this direction, dipole is in this direction and forces are trying or we can say torque is trying to rotate the dipole in this direction. This is clockwise direction. Let's try to find out the direction of P cross E. P cross E is coming in the same orientation of this arrow. Whereas E cross P, whereas E cross P will be opposite. So the correct expression for torque should be P cross E. Okay. This is the expression for torque and uh, let's move into further detail of the torque. As the expression for torque, we got the expression for torque as P cross E or P E sin theta. In magnitude terms, we can say torque is zero under two situation is zero when sin theta is zero. Sin theta is zero means theta can be zero or theta can be pi also. Okay. Theta can be pi also. So what are these two situations? One is P and E are parallel. This is theta equal to zero. The second situation is P and E are anti-parallel. This is theta equal to pi. In both these two situations, torque is zero force is always zero when the field is uniform. So these two situations will be called equilibrium as net torque and net force both are zero. Okay. Further, I will detail you that it will be called stable equilibrium and it will be called unstable equilibrium. Okay. Why so? I will explain in a moment. Then, what is the maximum torque? The maximum value of torque can be Pe when sin theta is 1. So, sin theta is 1 means theta is 90. Okay. So, what is what will be the situation? The situation is E and P are parallel. Uh, oh, sorry, perpendicular. This will be the situation. Yes. P can be in downward direction also, but it should be perpendicular to E. So the maximum torque, torque is zero in two situations. One will be called stable equilibrium, one will be called unstable equilibrium. Okay. In this part, we'll know that uh, what is the potential energy aspect of a dipole when it is placed in external uniform electric field. Okay. So what happened? Let's say this is a dipole and this is placed in this electric field. Okay. So we have talked that there will be a torque which try to align the dipole along the direction of electric field. But what if I'll with some external torque, with some external torque. I try to increase this angle let's say by a very small value d theta so I have to do some work 
and that work will be stored as the potential energy or change in potential energy of the dipole so du by definition is nothing but work done by external agent okay so what is work done by external agent is the torque external d theta okay tau d theta is the work done by external agent what is torque torque is pe sin theta d theta and if you are changing angle from theta initial to theta final so the integration of sin theta is nothing but minus cos theta and when we put the limit theta initial theta final du is u final minus u initial so what we are getting here is u final minus u initial is the work done by external agent is equal to we take out negative sign pe cos theta final minus cos theta initial okay so that is the expression for work done by external agent or delta u when we are changing the angle from theta initial to theta final theta is nothing but the angle between p and e okay and this can also be written as negative of the work done by electric field okay or electric forces as we are not providing any kinetic energy so some of these two works external and electric forces should be zero that is the total work no change in kinetic energy total work has to be zero okay this is a very very important expression you should remember this expression by understanding it obviously let's move further into the potential energy as we get the expression for potential energy as minus pe cos theta if we don't put the limit obviously so you can be also or potential energy can also be seen as minus p dot e okay so this is another expression but the expression i gave you earlier was more absolute because there is some assumption in this expression that is u is equal to 0 when theta equal to pi okay that is the assumption in this expression okay so what we are saying that in this situation when p and e are parallel p and e theta will be 0 u will be minus of pe that is the minimum that is the minimum possible value of u which is the property of stable equilibrium okay so this is stable equilibrium second p and e are opposite theta is pi u is minus p e cos pi which is nothing but cos pi is again minus 1 so it comes out to be plus p e which is the maximum potential energy u max okay so that is the condition for unstable equilibrium and in this graph also minus p e plus p e zero this is no equilibrium okay potential energy zero means doesn't mean anything that is just a reference okay minimum potential energy is stable equilibrium maximum potential energy is unstable equilibrium okay so this is all about potential energy you should know so the next part is 
SHM of a dipole which is placed in external uniform electric field. Okay, let's say dipole is in its stable equilibrium. It is parallel to electric field. Okay, if it is displaced again by an angle theta, so it experiences torque which tries to bring back torque due to electric forces which try to bring back to its original position and its value is given by PE sin theta. What if theta is very small? If theta is very very small or tends to zero or less than five degrees. So we can say for that much small angle in radians we can write torque as PE theta because sin theta tends to theta. Okay, so the torque will become PE theta and if the restoring torque is proportional to the angle, we call it the angular SHM, angular SHM, okay, and the time period for that will be given by 2 pi under root of moment of inertia of the system about axis of rotation by the constant or the factor of PE or theta which is PE in this case. So the time period will be this there are number of questions which forms on this situation. Yeah we should also talk about few general cases. In most of the cases there will be two point charges having equal mass separated by L and they will be rotating about this the center of mass this will be minus q this will be plus q so what is i i is nothing but two masses with having separation from the axis as l by 2 so the moment of inertia in of this situation can be written as ml square by 2 this is the most general situation you will deal there are many more so you need to calculate i for that system okay Yes, there was one more thing. If theta is large, if theta is greater than 10 degrees or large, the motion will be oscillatory but not SHM. Okay, but not SHM. Okay, so motion is SHM only for small angle 5-6 degrees up to ok the last part is dipole which is placed in non-uniform electric field ok so what happen as the field is non-uniform we can say both the charges may experience different amount of field ok these are the two charges let's say negative and positive as the field is no more uniform they may experience different amount of field or different direction of forces. So the net force will appear or may appear I can say. So what will be that force? As force is given by minus of du by dr. And the expression for potential energy is minus p dot e. We have to take its derivative. P is not changing, field is the thing which is changing. So the expression comes out to be this. Okay. That is the force on a dipole. Okay. So this expression is very complex. Let's understand its meaning. So force is parallel to P. Force is parallel to P. If field is increasing, okay, if field is increasing, force will be parallel to P, and if field is decreasing, force will be parallel to minus P, or I can say opposite to P. This increasing and decreasing should be in the line of P. Okay, that is why I said this is a slightly tricky business. Okay, 
so if let's say I'm taking an example this is a positive charge this is a negative charge if field is upward and increasing dipole is obviously in upward direction field is upward and increasing we can say the force will be in upward direction the second situation field is downward and increasing again I can say force will be in upward direction okay field is in this direction and changing so there will be no force as field in this direction is not changing so field must change along P okay or in the line of P so there will be no force as these two charges will experience same value of field field is changing perpendicular in the perpendicular direction okay so this is a very important expression d by dr is the component of change of field along p Tick. okay 